Well, a group of more than 30 cancer organizations is banding together to get better access to cancer medications that can be taken at home. The group, led by Rethink Breast Cancer and CanCertainty Coalition, will be headed to Queen's Park today to protest the significant amount of costs that are you know, accumulated out of pocket. The group hopes to get help covering pills and prescriptions that have taken the place of traditional IV-based treatments. The group will be placing 30 hula hoops at Queen's Park to address all the hoops they have to jump through in order to get cancer care. And joining us live this morning from the front lawn of Queen's Park is Rebecca Grundy. She was diagnosed with grade 4 brain cancer at the age of 28 in 2018. Rebecca is here now on CB24 Breakfast. Thanks so much for joining us, Rebecca. How are you doing, first of all, before we get into the situation? How are you? How is your health? Hi, uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my health is actually quite good. I'm one of the lucky ones. Grade four glioblastoma is what I was diagnosed with, which is the most of aggressive form of brain cancer. So for most patients, they have a prognosis of about 15 to 18 months. Um, and uh, I'm one of the very fortunate few that managed to uh, get through all of my treatment. And I, I go for MRI scans every three months and they just are, they're stable every single time. So it's just fantastic. I'm so grateful. That's amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. So glad we're talking this morning. So let's talk about this because this is really the first time in a couple of years that a group's been able to sort of come to Queen's Park and make their case. And you're putting 30 hula hoops on the lawn to really sort of show that message here. Explain what those hoops are like because I think some people think if you get sick, if you get cancer and you live in Ontario, you should be okay when it comes to your drugs that are needed to keep you alive. You're exactly right. And most people don't actually know the issues that young people face under the age of 65 here in Ontario. And uh, what you have to do is basically exhaust all private pay options when you're uh, diagnosed with cancer and when your treatment comes in the form of a pill that's take home, as opposed to, like you said, an IV form that's take uh, in, in hospital. And there's been a progression of, of cancer treatments over the years. There are a lot more targeted therapies. They uh, don't kill the healthy cells. and uh, people are living longer, better lives with these treatments. The problem is, is for patients living in Ontario that are under the age of 65, they have to jump through multiple hoops to find an, a way to pay for their drugs. So first, uh, you have to exhaust all private pay options. That means maxing out your private insurance. Even some patients don't even have private insurance or others have very limited drug benefits uh, like myself. Um, and uh, then you have to start jumping through more hoops. Uh, the Ontario Trillium Drug Program is available for those that have high costs for drugs. And uh, that's the second hoop you have to jump through. More paperwork, more delay. It usually takes a patient on average a couple weeks to even almost like a month and a half to get approval for their insurance uh, privately to pay for drugs that are listed, approved by Health Canada, and like I said, listed in Ontario. And then once they exhaust all those options, apply for the Trillium Drug Program. So we're back the Auditor General uh, recently... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, continue. I thought you finished your thought. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. So the Auditor General actually released a report that said it can take up to a month for somebody to get approved for the drugs that, like I said, are approved here in Ontario to other cancer patients that are over the age of 65. These are standards of care. For me, uh, for a grade 4 glioblastoma, the only chemotherapy treatment that is approved, because there are very limited types of treatment for glioblastoma, wasn't even covered. <laughs> because it was in the form of a pill, um, I had to go through all of this process and then still be faced with a $4,000 bill at the end of getting approved by Trillium. That 4%, it's a 4% um, of your pre-disability household earnings. So I was off on long-term disability. I was actually also uh, fighting with my insurance company because of a long-term disability claim that didn't get processed properly. So I was basically making the amount that somebody would make on ODSP living in a downtown Toronto condo. And m the cost of my drug on a monthly basis was over $6,000. My private drug plan only covered 5,000 of that. And I was going to be on that chemotherapy for eight months. So uh, this situation is not unique. It's um, 
quite common for those young people. And like I said, the majority of cancer drugs now are these formulations where people take them home, they're in pill form, some are in infusion, and things need to change because this has been something that we've been advocating for actually for almost a decade. Well, Rachel, we're looking forward to hearing more stories throughout the day. We're going to be covering this here on CP24, but appreciate you sort of helping us to sort of set the stage for what's going on today, and, and good luck to you and uh, continued good health as well. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, and looking forward to having everybody out today because actually if we lived in another province like Western Provinces, Northern Territories, or Quebec, we wouldn't have to go through this process. Right. They get their drugs almost immediately without any extra cost. So yeah. thank you so much for having me on today to Absolutely. share the word.